So, um, in order to get this house built on this slope, we've used a strip footing, which is um, quite a shallow thickness of concrete uh, poured into the bottom of a trench, and then you build, use blocks to um, bring the uh, uh, foundation up to damp proof course level which in this case is right up here by this string so quite a height really and and you can imagine um, well it would be impossible to use a trench fill footing in this instance because you've got so much height to make up you'd be out of the ground so uh, that's um, uh, knocks that one on the head we've had to put various steps in this one so I just thought I'd talk you through on um, how these steps work so the steps aren't only in the concrete, they're in the actual uh, hole itself. And um, the rule is for a step is that the overlap of the concrete, and I'll explain what, with an image perhaps in a minute, has to be twice what the, um, what the height of the step is. So here's a little diagram from um, part A of the building regulations and it explains uh, how the height versus the overlap thing works. Uh, so it's uh, twice the length to the height of the step. So here we've got a two block step, which is uh, 45 centimetres. Okay, so the the step in, in the foundation is 90 centimetres back. Okay, along um, is 90 centimetres back. So they, we've got a double thickness footing here to make a block, if you like, in the footing. To strengthen that area where the step is, I'll, I'll draw an image and put it on some graph paper, uh, so we can see that. Um, and what the the reason that step is 45 centimeters high is because it's two concrete blocks high. Now, if you're using bricks, you might want to step it to do uh, account for your bricks, th uh, brick heights. But if you if you make your steps in multiples of block heights, like we've done here then you won't have to do very much cutting so you can see this course of blocks here it's not quite right i had to put quite a thick bedding of um, mortar along the bottom but it's just about uh, meets up with the next step along and is the correct height so that saved a lot of cutting and faffing around or maybe i would have had to put two courses of bricks in there or something i don't know but um so it's a quite quite a quick thing to make your steps um uh at the right height but it's quite a long job to cut lots of blocks uh, to fit an, an, an unusually, uh, a, st a step of an unusual height. Um, so, as you can see, we've got different size steps. That doesn't really matter. We've got a two blocker here, a one blocker there, and a, and a, and a two blocker there. Now we have got a, a three block step on this side. Um, but the the building inspector wasn't too chuffed with that one to be honest I mean he didn't make us dig it out but we had to put extra reinforcing in it um, and also as well because it's a um, what's that two four sixty sixty seven point five centimeter high step you need a 1.4 meter overlap so there's like a you know half a cube of concrete in there and bear by my mixing with hand that took quite a while so i don't know if it works out better to do smaller steps whether you use less concrete that way or not i, I don't know mm, no don't know so um but yeah so i probably keep it to a two block step if you can um like i say the the building inspector uh he wasn't uh wasn't too keen on that um so uh so that's how you do it the re how you get these heights uh for the steps is um you would take some reinforcing bar in, in short lengths and what you do you um before you lay your concrete you bash those in the ground at the correct height uh for the concrete so we've got a, um, a dumpy level up there or an optical level and we've got our um our site staff here and what you do, you go around and you you carefully measure the the um, measure the height of each step. So we started off at the bottom. Did we start off at the bottom? No. We started off by the existing footing. So you really, it's best to match up to the existing footing because then you know you've got a set number of blocks. 
at that point up to your um, damp proof course so we hammered in some pegs up this end so the pegs are the uh, red lines in on this diagram you hammer them into the ground and they need to match up with where the top of the footing uh, is going to go and they have to be the concrete has to be a minimum of 300 300 millimeters thick so you bash in your, po uh, your peg like that and then you come down to your next step and in this case we dropped three blocks um, like I say that wasn't such a popular choice with the building inspector um, and then you bash in your next pe um, uh, piece of rebar into the soil uh, the trench is empty at that point and you make it um, three blocks lower than the peg that you bashed in up here you see and you carry on like that so each each peg you bash in represents the top of the peg represents the top of the concrete and then you see when you go to pour your concrete you've got all these pegs bashed in all the way around all set at the correct level and provided you bash them in um, far enough and they're nice and sturdy um, when you when you pour the concrete in they don't move they just stay there and you scrape your concrete around with a rake or a shovel or a hoe or whatever you have handy and make the top nice and level then you see because you've set out your levels already and when you finish you can just check it you just rest a spirit level gently on top of the concrete just to check roughly everything's okay for a sanity check and um, hopefully at that point uh, everything will be uh, nice and level so um, the, the step here is is uh, formed by placing a piece of shuttering a piece of shuttering can be any kind of sheet material or even planks if you're uh, desperate uh, nailed together to form a sheet and uh, you you put that in the trench um, these steps how did I do this this time around so when I poured the concrete I started from the bottom upwards so I, I pulled this lower step first and then I put a piece of shuttering in here and you drive horizontal rebar into uh, diagonal rebar into the sides of the trench like that either side and that will hold the board in place and then you pour your next step using the pegs as a guide and then uh, when you've done that step you move to the next step back each each time you do a step because you're breaking the con your effect it's a separate pour you must put um, an ad adequate amount of rebar into um, into each uh, between uh, between each layer so here's this diagram again the green uh, lines represents the reinforcing bar which uh, binds the two layers of the footing together layers one and two as labeled on here if you google uh, detail for stepped footing and rebar on a google image search you'll probably find a better detail um, but i think i've got another video for that which i'll tag on to the end of this one uh, to show you to show you what i mean but um so that's uh, a badly explained um way of uh, putting steps in concrete if you've got pipes in your concrete it's quite good to coincide uh, pipe drainage pipes which you have to get around it's quite good to coincide the top of the step so when you put the lintel on the top as I've done here it will just go across the top of the pipe so um, yeah so that's pretty much it okay thanks for watching cheers bye